Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you and, and to all the team at the Scott Institute for helping to put together uh, this great program today. Just wanted to uh, uh, provide a little bit of context uh, for kind of the, the mayor's remarks um, when we were talking about the Marshall Plan and what, what we're effectively looking at. Um, as the mayor said, this is a great collaboration and, and to underscore kind of the remarks of, of both Congressman Lamb and Doyle and County Executive Fitzgerald that here in Pittsburgh, the partnerships run deep um, and the opportunity to pull together the network of partners um, in order to craft this plan um, is really a testament to that partnership. Um, the creation of the Marshall Plan just didn't happen overnight, however. So th this is really kind of a, 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 a setting that has been laid over the last seven or eight years with regards to um, thinking back to a, a meeting that we had with Advanced Energy Economy that the uh, county executive and the mayor chaired back in 2014. Um, and those that work started to lead to our partnerships with the Department of Energy, our uh, becoming a finalist with the smart U.S. Department of Transportation Smart PGH program um, uh, and U.S. DOT Smart Cities Challenge. Uh, the creation of our Eco Innovation District Plan, which is yielding the investments of the Bus Rapid Transit Program, the $70 million district heating system, and now the $500 million Vision Center being developed by UPMC. Um, but also key analysis that we were able to develop with our climate action plans, our work with Siemens and their city performance tool, that really starts to bring together this idea of it's not just about improving the environment and uh, reducing emissions, but it's really about an economic restructuring. Um, and that is one of the key underscoring themes behind the Marshall Plan for Middle America. Just to give you a little sense in terms of the geography, we're really talking about a four state region between Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky, where the cities and the regions, the metro areas around Columbus and Pittsburgh and Dayton and Huntington and Louisville, we've been partnering together uh, through various city collaboratives over the last eight years um, on issues of jobs and workforce development and uh, energy transition. And so when we came together with this concept of developing a, an investment strategy uh, around the just energy transition in the upper Ohio Valley, it was really a, a natural kind of collaboration and partnership. And what we've been able to put together is effectively a community-led vision that is aligning these cities around the common needs of investing in our infrastructure, uh, our energy infrastructure, our broadband infrastructure, water and transportation systems, um, as a way to not just reinvigorate, but reimagine uh, what the Upper Ohio Valley and Upper Appalachian region could be. Um, and what we understand and what we know is that we have all of the tools and capacity in order to be a global leader in this transition. Um, and when the mayor talks about the investment strategy, it's not just a federal investment strategy, but it's abilities, our ability to bring together public and private capital to coordinate these different aspects together. And really what that establishes for us is the opportunity to build um, on existing industries, but also build on the frontiers of new manufacturing um, industries in the clean energy sector. So, you know, what we're really looking at is this community-led vision of the Upper Ohio Valley coming together uh, with the abilities to reinvest in our communities and to leverage capital to do so. Um, and so one of the things that we've been able to cultivate is partnerships across the university, nonprofit and public uh, and private sectors to help craft this vision together. And really where we're at in terms of the next steps, as the mayor mentioned, the major uh, infrastructure investments that are being made with uh, the federal government is an opportunity to craft a bill, um, uh, a Marshall Plan bill, if you will. There's a number of, of kind of uh, aligned uh, policy strategies that are out there. And what the cities have come to recognize is that they are effectively the delivery agents. Um, what you heard from the county executive, and we can repeat that story in the other regions that we've been collaborating with uh, from Cincinnati to Columbus, is that these clean energy investments are being made at the local level. And it gives us the ability to accelerate those investments and in job creation. 
so as we look towards the next couple of weeks and months uh, with the potential of having a, a, an investment uh, strategy in terms of the infrastructure bill in front of us, uh, we're working uh, feverishly to start to cultivate uh, that message um, and bring home a, a vision that can uh, ultimately be delivered within the Ohio Valley. Um, thank you. So we have a couple of questions that are coming in, but I have to tell you, most of them are about wanting to see your slides later. <laughs> so um, do we have any additional questions that have come in um, about the Marshall Plan? Um, otherwise, let's, you can tell us a little bit more about it as we're looking, um, as we're waiting for another question or two to come in. But um, you talked about Mayor, you talked about the importance of, and I'm going to have to go to universities on this. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about some of the ways that universities can get involved and how you're involving not only Carnegie Mellon, University of Pittsburgh, but other universities in the region? Yeah, I, I believe that the, the key part of it is through um, the partnership with existing businesses, uh, businesses that are presently here. We've had since the introduction of um, the plan, uh, three different companies come to us uh, to promote uh, the creation of uh, Hydrogen Valley, uh, to look at the Ohio Valley in a different way where hydrogen pr production could take place. And our job has been connecting them with developers that are in this area. But as we start to look at companies that presently exist, the, if you would think about... Um, the, the backhaul of where the hydrogen power will come from will we'll more than likely start with blue hydrogen. Um, and trying to get those companies that provide the natural gas the, to then be able to provide a renewable source to transition to. I think there's an um, expertise and a, a, a partnership that can be made between the universities and those companies in helping to make that transition. Further companies, like if we, if we start talking about uh, solar power, uh, companies like Cavestro or PPG, and expanding their operations into the different functions of making solar cells more efficient, um, and all of the industries that are around that, uh, all the way to the smaller companies that can be um, ancillary to the entire industry itself. The university provides the training for the innovation in the idea for the creation of whatever all the, the, the multitude of industries in that ecosystem would be. So I, I think it's absolutely critically important uh, for companies to be able to understand how they can be a part of this even if they haven't been in the past or even if they're a part of the fossil fuel industry. As Congressman Lamb said, there, there's polarizing viewpoints uh, that separate us and keep us from really making great progress. I believe that there is this opportunity for our region not to be hurt by the transition into renewable energy, but for a future that will actually be an economic boost to all of the Ohio Valley and Northern Appalachia. Fantastic. So we do have a couple of questions coming in, but I wanna ask a quick one while we have Congressman Lamb on the line, which is what would you want to see at the national level that could help us specifically um, in Pittsburgh? So what are some asks that we could, we could put together? And then we do have a question about how will this be measured and what is the transparency that you'll have for the program? I'll ask Grant to talk about uh, the study more specifically with the measurement and also um, within the conversations that we've had with the other cities. And we do have a conversation coming up this week with uh, the staff of both Congressman Lamb and Congressman Doyle and where we are at that point as well. Yeah, uh, just to jump in there, you know, measurement and verification is a really important component here. Um, and folks in the energy space and the sustainability space, we know that more than anybody. Um, one of the great examples that I would put forth is the area of, of energy efficiency. Um, so, for example, an opportunity to have a, a federal block grant to local governments to support energy efficiency work 
is one of the fastest ways for us both to bring money into a local government, make investments in our capital stock, like our facilities or our fleets, um, see the resulted impacts in terms of emissions reductions or energy savings or cost savings, but also the ability to put real jobs and real people to work real quickly. Um, so when you think about that, it's an opportunity to procure, design a project, um, ob obtain and deploy technologies and, and see measurable results with regards to energy consumption reduction, emissions reduction, but also, also the resulting benefits in terms of jobs created and economic impact. Just want to add real quick to each city has different economic development strategies. So, you know, if we're looking at Cincinnati, their, their focus is on solar. Um, and in Youngstown, it's electrification of fleet and utilizing Lordstown as an opportunity uh, so that is the United States transfers to an electric public transit system. We're not buying our buses out of China. There's options right here in the United States. So it, it, it varies where you would be able to create the measurement, but the two critical measurements are going to be the number of jobs created in the amount of carbon that has been reduced in order to be able to meet the Paris Agreement and to be able to show to the rest of the world that this region can actually grow through this transition.